Hi, my name is Sarah Newton and I've been helping young people and their families now for over 15 years. Over the last few years I've immersed myself in the digital world with the intention of discovering what impact technology is having on our family lives. In this video series I'll be sharing with you what I have discovered. <laughs> Welcome back to the Screen Ages, and in this episode we're going to be talking about how technology is changing the family and the family dynamics. Now what we've seen in the last five to ten years is very, very unusual. We are seeing what is called, or referred to in Dan Tapscott's book, as the Generation Lap. We're very used to generation gaps and, and what they're about, but a Generation Lap is different. It's probably the first time that it's ever happened, and it's probably the only time it's ever going to happen. And let me just tell you a little bit about that. What they mean by Generation Lap is that this is the only time in history that our children have had much, much more knowledge about something than their parents. So if we remember back to the first video when we talked about them having 10,000 hours experience online when they were 21. Now that experience has meant that they are, in one area of their home, ahead of their parents. And like never before, parents have had to turn to children and use them really as their technical support gurus. So the power shift or the balance of power within these homes has actually changed. The teenager's enthusiasm for their online world is what motivated family members to use the internet in the first place. And the skill that they had helped their family to overcome any challenges that were, they were found online. So the power dynamics between adults and youngsters were basically flipped as they became the technical wizards and the adults needed their support. So this shift in power has really meant that what is happening is a new family is emerging. Now I've recently been doing some um, research with a large TV company in the UK and in the future Let's say in about five years' time, we'll have very, very different families than, than what we have now. So what I'm going to give you now is like an, an overview of the future of what's coming. For some of you, your families may already be like this. For others, this is where you will be going. <laughs> so I'm going to take you, we're going into the future here. Now, in Dan Tapscott's book, he called um, the, this new type of family the new open family. Um, and I like that that word, so I'm going to stick with them. This isn't like um, open relationships that those of us remember that word, you know, no one's swapping children around or anything. They're called open families because they're transparent, they're open, they're honest, and they build mutual understanding and acceptance when dealing with issues. So they're a real team, this new open family. They learn, adjust and evolve. So they don't assume that there's one formulaic answer. The old model has been breaking down actually for a long time. There's sort of the um, the authority figure at the top issuing down orders. Now that has been breaking down for a while, which which we know. But the new open families are becoming much more level. Now it's not that parents don't have the um, authority that they need to get things done in the in the family, but it's just that it's a bit more level and the children have a lot more say. And families are still firm and they're still fair with their children. This isn't about children running riot and having no boundaries. It's actually the opposite. But it's just that the children may have more say in how those boundaries are made. So I want you to think of a real tight-knit team here that's working very, very effectively towards the goals of that family. Not, I don't want you to think of you know, children running, running riot and parents having no um, control because it's not that at all. So if we look at the um, new OPA family, what's in and out then in terms of how, how we deal with our children? Well, I can tell you what out is out is the naughty step and the punishment sort of regime that's been really, really big in this, um, in this country for a very, very long time. What is also out is this sort of separate spaces and separate viewing. If you remember back 
um, you know, to the houses that were built in the 70s and 80s, they, the houses were very much geared to everybody having their own rooms. So the bedrooms became really big and the living spaces became really small because what happened then is that, you know, children went to their bedrooms and they stayed in their bedrooms um, and didn't really come out. And the teenagers were in their rooms watching one thing, the younger child was in another room watching something else, and the parents would have been somewhere else watching who knows what. Now, what we're seeing is that a lot of architects are actually building different types of houses now to cope with this new open family. And these houses, their bedrooms are very much smaller and their living space is extremely bigger. And if we if we even think of, you know, all the modernisation that's going on with houses to make these large open living spaces. Because what's happening is families are spending more time together in the same room. Now they might be actually doing something different within that room or even watching different programmes within that room, but they are more likely to spend time together. So you might have the child watching something with their headphones on the laptop, you might have the younger child playing a game and you might have the parents watching telly, but they're definitely doing more together. This whole notion of telling your kids what to do and expecting them to do it um, will be actually and is actually going out as well. It's much more, um, we expect our children to be much more individual now and have a say and not just do, do as I say concept. And, the, and this don't tell the kids. We, I remember certainly when I was growing up that parents had these muffled conversations behind closed doors where you didn't tell the kids anything. That's really, really changing now and where people and families are getting children involved in their decisions. So instead of we're going to go out and buy this car and the parents have already discussed it, they're more likely to bring the child into that conversation. I think families in the past have been very isolated, so they've all lived together but there's been a real sense of isolation and, and that is actually...